Imagine you won the bronze medal at the 100 metres in the Olympics. Would that not be unbelievable? Imagine your favourite football team finished in the top four of the Premier League. Would that not be amazing? Or imagine you got straight A's in your A-level results. Would that not be the best thing ever? Well, the answer to each of these questions is probably, but not necessarily. For example, for most people, getting the bronze medal at the Olympics would be unbelievable in the 100 metres. But for someone like Christian Coleman, that's actually a bit of a failure. He's the hot favourite to win the gold. Finishing in the top four of the Premier League for most football clubs is a brilliant achievement. But if you're a Man City or Liverpool fan, nothing but winning the league will do. Getting straight A's in your A-levels for most of us is just like unreal. But if you're wanting to get into Harvard Law School, nothing but A-stars will do. Do you see how we all interpret success in different ways dependent upon our perspective? And that's a principle which we see to be especially true in our passage today, 1 Kings 16 verses 29 to 34. From a human perspective, we might read this passage and think, wow, things are looking brilliant in Israel. But as we read this passage, we see from God's perspective, things aren't actually so great. You might recall where we left off in this passage. We've seen a long list of kings who came and went in Israel. And finally, now as we get to verse 29, we see a new king on the throne, and this is King Ahab. Now, from a human perspective, we might look at Ahab's reign very much favorably. I mean, look at all the things which could be interpreted positively throughout Ahab's reign. Firstly, you can see in verse 29 that he reigned for 22 years. That's stability. That's a good thing, you might say, for Israel. And on top of that, you can see in verse 31, he actually married a girl called Jezebel, who was the daughter of the king of the Sidonians. Once again, this looks from human perspective like a great thing. This will be good for Israel's foreign relations. On top of that, you can see in verse 34 that King Ahab actually rebuilds Jericho. So now even the construction industry is booming in Israel. It's up and running. And so from a human perspective, you might think everything looks good in Israel. Ahab is a great king. But hold on a second. As we peel back the curtains, we see in this passage God's perspective. That actually things aren't so great for Israel. And Ahab isn't perhaps the king we might think he is. He may seem like a good king, but he's not God's king. Sure, we might look at these verses and see that Ahab rules for 22 years and somehow think that that's good to have stability in Israel. But actually, those were 22 years marked with disobedience. As you can see in verse 30, Ahab did more evil in the sight of the Lord than anyone else who went before him. 22 years of long disobedience to the Lord. Sure, he might have married a woman called Jezebel, the daughter of the king of Sidonians. We might think that this would be good for Israel's foreign relations. But it's a direct violation of what God had previously commanded and expected from the kings of Israel not to intermarry with the pagans. Why? Because you will end up worshipping their gods. Thirdly, we might think it's a positive thing to rebuild Jericho, get the construction business underway. But this is a direct violation of what God had previously commanded in his word. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 26, he literally said there, Cursed be the man who rebuilds Jericho. Let's not be fooled. God's view of success and man's view of success are often very different. And I wonder where you need to hear this when you think about your life. Are you tempted to think that your life is a success merely because you've got a good job, you earn a good income, or you're the smartest person in your class, or you're popular, you're well liked, or maybe you just view your life as success because you deem yourself a good moral person? Let's not be fooled. God's view of success is often very different to man's view of success. Let the barometer of our life not be what our culture says success looks like, but let's try and stay true to God's word, which ultimately tells us life is about knowing Christ and making him 